Welcome to Sasquatch Theory. In this video, I traveled down to Southeast Missouri to meet with Michael. He has had a close encounter with the Sasquatch and has had ongoing activity on his property. The location is near the current river and has endless miles of forest. I noticed the property owner was the last house on the road as I passed by a dead end sign. It seems to be a trend with my research and I have noticed most people with Sasquatch activity are the last house on a dead end road. Makes sense, right? The location is close as the crow flies to where a hunter recently went missing here in Missouri. David Politis talks about the story on the Can-Am Missing Project and it was strange how the body just showed up the next day in an area that was already covered by the search team. My heart goes out to his family and those impacted by his loss. I really noticed something on this property that I have not felt in the past. There are certain pockets in these woods where the silence is deafening and you feel this undescribable pressure. I know it sounds wild, but it's something you have to experience. I mean, I have gotten this sense in the past, but not to this extent. So what is it? Could it be a dogman? Or a hellhound? Or possibly something worse? Join me as I listen to Michael's Bigfoot encounter and explore his property. If you enjoy these types of videos, please like and subscribe. And if you have had a Bigfoot encounter, please get in touch. Um, my first one was in 1986. Mm -hmm and I was a senior in high school and it was uh, January it was cold and uh, I'd been out coyote hunting and um, I was actually skipping school that morning I was like I said I was a senior in high school so I was driving back down a gravel road it was in Stoddard County of southeast Missouri and um, it was in hilly wooded area and it wasn't scary or dramatic I just saw it it um, it was in a straight part of the gravel road where I could see and it was about 75 yards and it just came across the road right in front of me I saw its left side and back I didn't get to see its face mm -hmm. um, and it disappeared really quick into some pine trees it was near the Castor River, and I'd always heard growing up the Castor River monster is what it was always called, and I'd ask what that is, and they'd say, well, it's just a hairy monster, and I guess I got to see it. It reminded me of uh, kind of the one on Star Wars. It was kind of a medium brown color. Mm -hmm. So real thick hair. Yeah, it had really thick hair, and it wasn't real long hair, but it was thick, I, maybe somewhere four to six inches long. Mm -hmm. And I could see, I can remember seeing like body tone. It was real muscled. It was big. Um, I have no clue how tall, but it was tall um, as it went across the road and in, into the trees. Like I said, I saw it quick. It crossed, it was a, a gravel road. And I remember about three steps. It came from one side and then disappeared in the trees. And I don't think it took more than three steps. Yeah. So it was big. And this was during the daytime or at night? It was the mid morning. Mm -hmm. It was the middle of the morning. I remember it had just started mist and rain. Um, like I said, I'd been out hunting. My grandfather had a farm up there. It was a section, 640 acres, and only 230 of it was farmable. The rest was woods. Mm -hmm. So I was up there all the time. And 
that's where I'd been and it had started misting rain and I needed to get on back to school because I was skipping the first few hours. And uh, How good of a look did you get at the Sasquatch? Could you see its face or just the side profile? No, I never did see its face. Pretty much the back of its head. Um, and it was standing really pretty straight that I remember. Mm. It uh, did not look at all, you know, people talk about looking like apes or whatever, it didn't. It, it was standing really straight. It was really fit. Um, the legs were long. And when its arms were swinging as it went across the road, mm. they were big and long. It was like um, maybe its hands went down to about its knees. Yeah. So really long arm swing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, what is your theory on what the Sasquatch was doing that morning? I don't know. I think it was probably just out. And I was driving along in a pickup down the road pretty slow. I remember going pretty slow. And I got a feeling it was probably going to cross the road anyway. Mm. But it never looked my direction. I never saw its face. But I kind of got a feeling it probably, when it got out into the road, then it realized there was somebody there, a vehicle there. So mm. then it's like he went ahead and hopped on into the trees. And there was, um, the side that it went into was kind of similar to, well, it was evergreens, but it was a short kind, kind of like Christmas trees. Mm. So, I mean, he disappeared quick into that. Yeah. And, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So. so How'd you feel after you encountered this thing? What were your thoughts and did you think it was Bigfoot? I actually didn't know what it was. Like say I was a teenager, I was and it was in nineteen eighty six and we didn't you know, then we didn't have internet. Only had two T V channels. Mm -hmm. And I would think about it off and on. I'm like, what was that? It wasn't a bear. I mean we really didn't even have bears then around southeast Missouri like now. Mm -hmm. And I just kept, and I, I never said anything to anybody about it. And I kept running through my mind all the time. What was it? I mean, this thing was walking like a person, but it was covered with hair and it was big. And finally in the nineties, uh, I was at a friend's house that lived in town and they had cable and I saw the, I don't remember what show it was, but they were showing the Patterson mm. Gimmerlin, however you yeah. say it. And then it's like, that's what I saw. Mm -hmm. You know, that's when it hit me. That's what I saw, only it wasn't black, like the one on that film, it was brown. And that's whenever I realized that's what I saw. Yeah. So it was like seven or eight years before I even had a clue what I'd even seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Well, in the Patty film, it, it's a brown creature. So yeah, it had been similar to that. Mm -hmm. Would you say it was a juvenile, mid-size, or adult? I would say it was an adult because it was the shoulders and the arms were just big. I mean, it was big. Yeah. I'm kind of thinking, I don't know for sure because all I saw was its left side and its back, but I just feel like it was a male mm -hmm. because I remember even at that distance, its its shoulders were just he was big. Had the shape of like a football player with the helmet and pads? Yes, yeah. yeah. But this one, I can remember for sure, it didn't have the cone-shaped head. It was round? Yeah, it was a round head. Um, you know, I can remember the hair coming off of its head. Like they say, there was no neck, mm -hmm. but huge shoulders, big, wide shoulders. Yeah. Could you smell anything? No. No? No, I never did smell anything. And even... As I drove past um, where he crossed, I never did smell anything. And I actually rolled the window down and kind of was looking through the trees to see if I could, and the trees are so thick, mm -hmm. I couldn't see it. Yeah, I'm sure there was more around. Than just Probably, that one. yeah. But I never did smell anything. Mm -hmm. um, so you encountered this creature in that other county. Yes. And what happened after that? After that, um, I really didn't have any other encounters. Like say we were, we farmed over there mm. and 
I really didn't have any other encounters. I, will, I thought about it a lot. I would watch for them because, you know, being in fields near the woods, tree lines. Mm. And I really didn't have encounters until we final, I finally, we, we quit farming and I moved over here in Carter County. Mm. And living in the, in the woods, um, I've started having encounters of, like at night, I would hear howls. And at first I thought, well, maybe it's wolves. I mean, it's definitely not coyotes. But then, because sitting out on the porch at night, and then I got to noticing it wasn't just howls, but then I would hear screams. I mean, literally, and my wife out is sitting outside too, and she didn't question it. Like, is somebody in trouble? You know, we would hear it sound like a woman being hurt or even killed. I mean, just these horrible screams. And it always set off coyotes in the area. And uh, we would hear that once in a while. I've actually heard that recently. And I've had um, rocks, like in wherever I bush hog around the house in the field, um, or food plots, there would be rocks. I'd already picked up rocks, and I would come back walking around or on uh, my Polaris and find these rocks just laying on top of the grass mm -hmm. out in the field. And it's like, I know I didn't put them there, and there's nobody else ever comes back here, so that was always curious of how did these rocks get there? And they would be anywhere from baseball size to maybe say the size of a dinner plate. And a few of them that big would even be as much as, they're kind of, the couple I found that big were flat, but they'd be about three inches thick and jagged. But how, you know, I'd always wonder how those rocks get there because I didn't put them there. I actually keep them picked up and, uh, Something would have to have thumbs, you know. To... Yeah, people say they're using the rocks to kill the deer, and I've kind of theorized that maybe they're flint napping. I mean, they got hands; they're intelligent. Yep. You hear the rock clacking, so yep. it's possible. Yeah, um, and I've noticed the baseball-sized rocks around the food plots where um, I do try to attract the deer, and at night they're out there. So. That I've wondered the same thing. If mm -hmm. all of a sudden these rocks showing up that haven't been laying there, you know, they're just all of a sudden they're there if they're not using those yeah. for ammunition. I've heard knocks in the woods too that sound like rocks hitting like a big oak tree. Like mm -hmm. you hear it hit the tree and then hit the, the leaves. And I've heard, heard that multiple times. Well, I noticed this past firearms deer season, I was sitting back in the woods hunting and I was hearing, I didn't hear rocks hitting a tree, but it sounded like rocks banging together. Mm -hmm. yeah. and maybe a hundred yards away from me up on a ridge, I could just, and it had a um, rhythm to it almost. Like they would clang together, I don't know how many times, seven or eight times, maybe 10, and then stop and then bang together again the same way. And that happened about four times, like this rhythm and you could tell it was rocks being banged together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I've kind of theorized there that perhaps they're using a type of like Morse code and yeah. communicating back and forth. That very well could be, but it makes you wonder if they're not trying to tell others that, you know, there's a human out here. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I know like the one knock, that means there's a human in there and when the human leaves, the one knock means, you know, they've left. So one knock for entry and one knock, knock for leaving. Yeah. Huh. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. I, we, there's a property that I investigate at and I leave recorders. And any time a car would drive past this guy's house, you'd hear one knock. And then when the car would drive by, when you wouldn't hear anymore, you hear another knock. And huh. that happened like five or six times in the recording. Yeah. So they're definitely communicating back and forth. They are. Yeah. Yeah. And I wonder too what the screams are, you know, because I mean, it literally, it makes you think there's a lady out in the woods. That's what it sounds like. And I've wondered what those are because mm -hmm. I hear those. I've heard that actually several times. I've lived back in here for eight years now 
And I've heard that quite a bit. Yeah. Um, actually, this morning, I heard what sounded like owl hoots. Hmm. But you hear, I hear owls around here a lot. But this morning, it was two. There was two of them, and kind of in the same direction from the house. It was before daylight. But it was like somebody trying to imitate owls. Mm-hmm. And I wonder what that is. I mean, I, it's kind of fascinating. I mean, you hear the, when you're back here all the time and you hear these noises, it's like that's not a normal animal. Mm-hmm. So. And when you go hunting out on the property, have you had any strange experiences? Other than the rock clacks mm-hmm. and trees being knocked down, I hear that. Um, I've noticed over the years, and it doesn't happen all the time, and it'll even be calm days is what's strange. I'll be back in the woods, and if I get too far, there gets to be a point if I get way away from the house, I'll start hearing trees being pushed over. Mm -hmm. And there's even certain areas that I will get a, I don't know, it's like my sixth sense maybe, I'll feel pressure and it's like you just don't need to go there you know it's like just leave get back and it, and if you leave that area then the pressure leaves the it's not really like a fear it's almost like something saying just get out of here mm-hmm. yeah it could be infrasound i know um, mountain lions can produce it and they say the sasquatch can produce it yeah that that's i've felt that different times and uh Whenever I feel that, I'll also, I notice I hear the trees being pushed down. Mm-hmm. And it's not just one, it's two or three. Yeah. On non-windy day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's what, I mean, I know you hear trees fall or limbs fall when you're out in the woods, but when this happens, it'll be more than one. Yeah. You know, in, in a pretty short succession of each other. Yeah, that's what I notice. It's always dead still, and you hear more than just one. Mm-hmm. Did it happen um, towards like a creek bottom where you were hearing the trees? Um, actually, it was kind of in a like a thick pine tree area. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, they love to hang out in pines. Yeah, and there's one pretty near, um, and that's kind of the area that I get the feeling sometimes. Sometimes it's I'll walk all through there, and it doesn't bother me. Mm-hmm. But sometimes I'll get that. It's like a, a pressure almost in yeah. uh, saying, just stay out of here. Yeah, like like a premonition, like something bad's about to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'll just turn around and leave, and, you know, then everything yeah. relaxes. I, I don't know how to describe it, but mm-hmm. um, a few times, not I can only remember a couple of times, too, back in the woods, hearing the silence. You know, like normally you can hear the bugs and the birds, um, but there's been a few times and I'll get that feeling and it will be almost deafening, just quiet. I mean, it's like there's no sound and that's a little kind of scary, really. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, The other, one of the other encounters that was kind of strange is behind the house, we've always had... um, a hog problem, wild hogs. Mm-hmm. And so I've had a trap, hog trap behind the house. And we have a camera on it and the, the state MDC was helping with it is actually their trap. And uh, the camera on the trap would always catch the wildlife, the deer, the hogs, squirrels, whatever, raccoons. Mm-hmm. We even had a bear get in it. Um, The bear got in the trap and tripped it, so it was caught. But he just went ahead eating. They had the uh, camera set on where it would film, Mm -hmm. and the bear would just lay on its side, and we had corn in it. And he would rake that corn to him and eat it. He'd just lay there and rake it. Well, anyway, when he got done, he just, um, you know, the the traps are made of, like, hog panels, like Mm -hmm. uh, cattle panels, wire. Well, he just took it. I mean, it filmed him. He took it and he just crushed one and walked out. Oh, wow. Well, then about two weeks later, we had um, the trap was tripped 
the bait was still in it, but it looked like there had been a deer in it. And a lot of times a deer will get in them, but they'll jump out. You know, they'll just, they, they'll set it off after the bait, but they jump out. Well, this one evidently got caught by something in the trap because there was hair and it looked like a, a struggle happened with the deer. And there was just a little bit of the panel was bent and there was some deer hair. So something got a deer out of that, brought it over the panel of the trap. But then on the outside, there was no drag marks. I mean, you could tell there's obvious a deer was in there and had a struggle of some sort. But something got it out. There was no, we looked everywhere for drag mark. Because, you know, in hunting season, if you drag a deer through the leaves, you can tell. There was none of that, no tracks. And the conservation guy that was out here, I said, what do you think? He said, I have no idea. But whatever it was had more ground clearance than the bear, you know, that we'd caught pictures of. And what was strange was the camera caught no pictures. You know, you always hear people say their cameras don't work, their cameras go dead. Well, they would come out every couple of days, put bait out, make sure the camera had new batteries, make sure everything was working. But whatever happened, the camera didn't work. But the camera was working when we were out there. So, you know, I can see where all these people can't seem to get pictures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is strange. Yeah. And it was a pretty big trap. Yeah, it was um, It was one of those, I don't know how big it, they usually have like five hog panels in a circle. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those that they draw the whole circle up. And then when it fires, when it, the whatever trips it, the whole circle falls. You know, like whenever hogs will get in it and then it's big, you know, it's a big trap. And they're mm -hmm. four foot panels. They're four foot high. Yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty neat. Yeah. You know they've caught some strange things if they're setting up trail cameras and traps constantly. Yep, they are. Another kind of strange thing with that was some of the um, really big, nasty boar hogs. If most of the time people will take the hogs, you know, the smaller ones, the uh, to eat they cook them and mm. they're really good well the big boars that are just too strong and tough and stuff if you hauled them say back to the back of the property we had a couple of times that within the next day they would be gone no sign of them ever being there the bodies the carcasses they just gone no bones no nothing yeah and um that's at at the back of the property mm-hmm yeah. yeah, we'll have to check that out. Sometime. Yeah, yeah. You're not too far off from my friend David. He's only like 40 minutes north of you here. Yeah. So I'm sure you have a lot of the same things going on that, that he does. It sounds like it. I've watched your documentaries with him, and, and he and I have very similar things yeah. happening. I don't know. I, I really think they're a hybrid human of some sort mm. because you can tell they're from what I've noticed, they're extremely intelligent. I think they're probably way smarter even than us. Because look, I mean, they survive in extreme wilderness, extreme conditions. Yeah. And from what the one that I saw, I can remember, like I said, I didn't see its face, but I can remember its hands, its body, its feet and stuff. I do remember its hands and fingers. They look like almost human, just big. Mm -hmm. And Do you think they're a danger to people? Or do you think they just want to live their own lives? I think they want to live their own lives. I think they want to be left alone. I mm -hmm. think they really want to... But if they're cornered or... Um, if you get too close to them and you don't heed their warnings, I think they might possibly be dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, like some of the feelings I have was just describing. I think it's best if you get those feelings to just kind of leave or skirt around that area. Yeah. Um, I think 
my opinion is, especially some of the stories I've been listening to, um, I think there's good ones and I think there's bad ones. I think they're, they're literally a type of human and I think it's just like us. There's good ones and there's bad ones. Yeah, and, yeah absolutely. I mean, any wild animal is capable of hurting somebody mm -hmm. if put in the right position. Yeah. I, um, I don't think it's a good idea. I know people talk about wanting to, to shoot one or to bring a body in. Mm -hmm. I just don't think that's a good idea. Yeah, I don't think so either. No, I think they want to be left alone. Mm -hmm. And I think if a person was to fire on one unprovoked, it might be bad for them. Yeah, I heard somewhere, maybe it was the Native Americans, but they said for every one of them that gets killed, they'll go after 10 people for one of them. Yeah, I believe that. So, I mean, if people are shooting them, trying to prove it, that could cause 10 people to go missing. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to make these things angry. <laughs> no, no. And um, whenever I go out in the woods and I go out there all the time because I live out here and I love hunting and I actually will talk to them. I feel like they, I don't, somehow I kind of think they hear you. I mean, I will tell them, you know, I'm coming out for food for my family, just mm -hmm. like you. Um, I do have the gun, and the reason I've got it is for the food or for protection. You know, I want to. You know, I'll tell them I don't want to scare you, and I don't want you to scare me. Yeah. And so far, knock on wood, evidently it's worked because I don't yeah. really have any trouble. Yeah, it sounds wild, but um, it's the truth. I mean, the farmer up there in Reynolds County. When the deer hear is side by side, they come running from every direction. Mm -hmm. They hear his voice, they come. I mean, they know when he's out there. Yeah. And they they travel to mm -hmm. get there. <laughs> so yeah. it's pretty neat. Yeah, it is. Okay. So um, you think we'll experience some activity? I don't know. It's possible. I mean, you yeah. just never know. It's always really random. Yeah, I was you know. thinking about it on the drive down here. I'm like, man, I wonder what it's going to be like out there. I wonder yeah. if it's going to be active. You just never know. No, you don't at all. It should actually be fairly quiet because it just rains, so mm -hmm. everything will be kind of wet. So Okay. Well, yeah, if you want, we can get ready and go check out the property and okay. see what else we can find. Sounds good to me. All right. I appreciate it. I do, too. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So as far as finding tree breaks and stuff, it's going to be hard. But now on the other side of that fence... That's all Mark Twain over there. Mm -hmm. So it's not been disturbed where over in here mine has. I had it logged. Okay. But I've never noticed structures. Now you, you do see the tree breaks here and there. Mm -hmm. How far do you think these, the Sasquatch will wander like away from the river or? They say they have a pretty big territory, up to like 50 mile radius. It's probably armadillo, I bet. Yeah. Um, I mean, just wherever you want to go. This is a trail around my property. Mm -hmm. But then, like I say, over there is Mark Twain. So. Yeah, let's walk this trail and just do a big loop, I guess. Okay. If that works for you. Just depends on how much time you want to spend out here. Yeah. That rock has not been there long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it looks fresh. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe we can... Can we cut up in there? Oh, yeah. That... Yep, okay. you want to. Let's, let's have a look in there. Wouldn't feel right if I went all the way home and didn't check this out. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure the turkey love to get in here. They do. Yeah, the turkey and hogs both. Sometimes... You can come back in here and all these pine needles and stuff will just be tore up. Yeah. But about a little over a mile on back in there is an old iron mine where they strip mined iron. Uh -huh. And uh, these pines are like this all the way back. I guess they planted these pines after they cut all the timber off. Yeah. Do you have a spring on the property? No. 
No, we're any flowing water. Mm -mm. I guess we're too high up. Yeah. See my my property lines over that way just a little ways and mm -hmm. I don't go back in here very far. Yeah. We had a I think it was 2020. We had a really 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 bad storm mm -hmm. come through and that's why all these trees are like those are broke off and leaning. Mm -hmm. That storm all it did a lot of damage. Yeah, looks like it. Mark Twain Road? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, we're on Mark Twain. Definitely a lot of trees that got slammed by that storm. Yeah. On, on back in there, it's really bad. The trees are down real bad. Yeah. I feel like we're getting closer to something. <laughs> yeah. It's real quiet. Yeah. See, that has not been there. Yeah, it looked like it broke off that or something. But yeah, it was on top of this leaf, which is yeah. fresh from this year. But look, it's broke. Yeah. That's blocking the road. Yeah. I wonder if it fell like that. I don't know. I haven't been back in here in a while. See, here's another one. That rock yeah. right there has not been here. Yeah, look at that. Now that's something right there. Yeah. I had a feeling something's been up in here. Too quiet. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's like all of a sudden everything just quit. That just happened too. Mm -hmm. This one hasn't been there long either. No. It's like three roads come together right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one was blocked over there. And then behind it, there's another one. But I mean, there's trees everywhere. And like, fall. like that one through there, see there's an arch. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I see that. Now I see stuff like that now and then. It is quiet back here. Yeah. It's actually too quiet. Mm -hmm. It's normally you can hear birds. So like, where'd you hear that woman screaming at, or the Sasquatch? It's all the way over on the other side. We'll go by there. There's actually, it's a pretty deep canyon. Okay. And that's normally where I hear the screaming is from that canyon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll have to show me when we arrive to that destination. Yeah. Have you ever walked up on a hog? No. Yeah. Back that way. Mm -hmm. And then I think they also travel down this way. I think like where we're at right now, they're probably not real common. We're kind of in between mm -hmm. an area. Okay. That's a big pine tree right there. That is. They say they get up in the trees. I've heard that. I always look up, but I, I haven't had a sighting up there yet or anything strange in the trees, but I heard bobcats and stuff get up there too. And yeah. I've never seen one of them either. Not in a tree anyway. No, I've seen several bobcats back here, but not up in a tree. Yeah. But I could see where they would. I mean, yeah. there's limbs up there that would. It's a jungle gym up there. Yeah. And you know they got to have a lot of strength in their hands you know to pull up mm -hmm. yeah absolutely i bet the young ones really like to climb and play in the trees yeah i think so But where I normally feel the times not to go is either back that way or where we're headed now down in here. Okay. But it goes, 
it'll be wooded like this all the way back to Van Buren. I mean, that's how, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just huge. You yeah. Know? Yeah, from Crawford County, it was woods the whole way here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is, I mean, Missouri is just, except the extreme southeast and Boot Hill, it pretty much is woods. Yeah. You seen any monster bucks out here? A few. Yeah. I haven't this year, but in the past I have. I've seen some pretty big ones. Mm -hmm. Seems like they'd like to get into this stuff. Yeah, they do. That's where I was heading over there where it drops off because I think we might possibly. Oh, you see that? Is that a stick in the ground? Oh, I guess it's laying down oh, like yeah. that. It looked like it was sticking. Yeah. Out. Older, but there's still. But it's, yeah. it hasn't been there long. I heard something up there. I don't know what that was. What kind of sound was it? Kind of like a hissing sound. Like a shh. Like, I don't know how to explain <laughs> it, but it was weird. I don't know what that was. I mean, what caused that? It looks like they're stuck to that tree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're both going towards that tree. See, there's, there's more down back that way. Yeah. That's not normal. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just not. That one's been that way for a long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, yeah. but at it, it one time it was probably stuck to that tree. To stay, because what else would cause it to stay that way? Yeah, they're both going the same direction. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, there's not um, any water. That's what's always seemed odd to me is other than the cattle ponds, there's probably not running water would be current river, and that's about three miles. Mm-hmm. But I guess they still venture that far from water. Oh yeah, for sure. I kind of look at it like bucks. You got river bottom bucks, timberland bucks, swamp bucks. Uh huh. <laughs> Same with the Sasquatch. But I mean, they can just be anywhere. I guess that died that way. Yeah. More rock movement. Yeah. Down here. That's what I was thinking. As we get down toward this canyon, we'll probably see more. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of woods and oh, this area. <laughs> it reminds me of home. See there's this is like one of those almost old piles maybe. Yeah. I bet you'd find a lot of stuff in that. That's where the pines over there. Yeah. Be down in there. Do you ever, that's where you heard it from, that scream? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that, that would be ideal, that whole ridge yeah. of pines for them to run all that. Yeah, that's where I was kind of working over too because mm -hmm. that's where I hear the screams is down in there. Yeah. And it's a real steep, rocky canyon. I don't know if you want to go down in there or not. That's steep and rocky. I mean, we can skirt the edge of it. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. But it goes, it runs back up there. And uh, over on that ridge is where I heard the rock clacking coming from. How long did it last for? Not real long. It, it, uh, it, was, like, it was like seven or eight bangs together and then they'd stop. Mm -hmm. And they did that like maybe four times. Yeah, and you had your rifle with you, right? Yeah, I was hunting. Yeah. Uh, it was during deer season. Both the times they did it with me, I had my Remington 30 out six. Yep. I just went ahead and sat there and it actually got quiet when that happened like on this back there a while ago. Mm -hmm. 
And I thought, I was a little worried, huh? But I went ahead and sat there. It did get kind of quiet when we walked through there, didn't it? (laughs) Yeah. Kind of eerie. Yeah, it did. I don't know if something's been digging there. Mm -hmm. But we got armadillos. It's hard to tell. We got so many armadillos. And And they're loud, too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that may just be armadillos. Might be a single hog rooting. Where do you think the hogs bed at or hang out at? I think they go back over that way, um, the direction that we didn't go. I think they go back in there because there's a lot of where they, where they strip mined. There's a lot of uh, holes that hold water, mm-hmm. and they you can see where they wall around them. Yeah. Well, I think the Sasquatch would definitely be up there just because it's still thick in there with all the pines. And you can actually skirt around this canyon and go up in there. Oh, can you? Yeah. Okay. That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. We can go around like the edge of the field in front of the house, and then you can cut back up in there. Okay. Well, we picked the nicest day. I, I heard there's a cold front coming in. Yeah. They said uh, tomorrow night we may get some storms. Yeah. We'll kind of, we can cut, just follow this canyon, and then we can go around it. Okay. What do you think about that tree up there? Like that, that Z tree? Or like the one that you can tell has been broken and bent before? I see those once in a while, and it's almost like it was broken, it healed. Yeah. Like something, when it was younger, broke it off, mm-hmm. but it went ahead and healed up. Yeah. And that's about the right height for an old tree break. Yeah. Wonder if it's Indian or just natural. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I'll walk up there and look at it. I, I've seen more than one of those out here, and it it makes you wonder: was it a Sasquatch did it, or what? See, there's that rock has not been there very long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> They're in here. Yeah wild how those trees are still like orange and red like as if it's still fall season yeah they've they really hung onto their leaves yeah see there's some more of them see the needles there mm-hmm. that rock has not been there very long and yeah same here that one's been there a while but Man, if I had an audio recorder, I'd hang it right on top of this hill. Yeah. It'd be a good spot. It would. You don't have any with you? I got one with me, yeah. Yeah, you could look around back here and find some spots, because mm-hmm. I hear noises a lot. Yeah. <laughs> At one time, that tree was broke over. Yeah. Hard to believe it'd grow back like that. I know it. Maybe hang a bucket here, gift some apples. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't even believe. Yeah, that's that's a lot of people. Down there, that ribbon, that's the corner of my property. Okay. Is that Mark Twain though? Yeah, it's Mark Twain on the other side. Okay. See, right there's the corner. Yeah. And okay, yeah, I see the boundary mark. Yeah, that's the corner. We're, we're standing on the boundary, and then it'll start running that way. Yeah. And that canyon will run right up through here. So you were in the house when you heard the scream? Mm-hmm. Okay. But and I had windows open. How I'd, far is that from here? 500 yards, 200 yards? Mm, yeah, probably I'd say about 300, maybe, 300 yeah. yards. And it just, like how long did it scream for? A couple seconds or like eight or 10 seconds? Maybe like three or four seconds. You know, yeah. it it didn't scream real. Actually, it, 
a few times it screamed for a long time, but then the coyotes chimed in and kind of almost, it's hard to tell then. I heard the woman scream one time and it was like, like you described, like a woman in serious pain screaming. Mm -hmm. But as soon as that stopped, it sounded like a werewolf called. So I, like, I don't know what the heck it was. Yeah. It freaked me out though. <laughs> But it sounded like it was two different creatures. So uh, it made me think of like, you know, the, the dog man stories yeah. and stuff like that. But well, there's, It freaked me out because I was little. I was like 11 or 12. That shut something. the window though. I was in my house too. Yeah. I thought it was my brother just screaming. Just me. messing with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's something I hope I never run into as a dog man. But, you know, there's so many sightings of it that it's got to be Yeah, I, I believe something it to sure. it. I've never seen one, but I, I believe it. They say stories I've heard that the dog men and the Sasquatch don't really like each other. Yeah, I could see that for sure. That's Mark Twain boundary. Yeah. It'll run right up through here, the boundary, because there's my next ribbon. Okay. And we'll just follow it, yeah. skirt this uh, canyon. Yeah. yeah it's definitely. like something would carry them off. So you. Wait, like the big ones? Yeah, like I'm talking like 250 to 300 pound hogs, you know, big boars. Uh -huh. You can see the trail comes from the houses back that way. Mm -hmm. So we would just bring them around here and then just dump them out right in here. And the next day it'd be gone. They'd be gone. Yeah, I mean, if it was coyotes or any other animal, you'd find pieces yeah. scattered around. And it's... Yeah, it's right there by the pines. Yeah. And as we go on, we'll follow this trail. It'll go around the edge of the canyon. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> then we can go up on that ridge over there. Because yeah. we'll have to go around that canyon. Yeah. Is where I was talking about the deer. Mm -hmm. They really travel. Because that stand, I guess they've done it for years but they'll cut right through here around the edge of this canyon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah experienced hunters say pay attention to where those old stands are yeah. because they're good spots. <laughs> yeah, and they are. I've yeah. seen deer right through here a lot. And in the summertime, every time I come through here, right here at this... Uh, I guess you call it a wet weather creek. Mm -hmm. It always smells like cat pee. Really? Really strong. Right in here. Yeah. So I don't know if there's a male lion marking a spot back here. Yeah. But it could be. Real strong smelling though? Really strong. Mm -hmm. Really strong. You know how a cat litter box will smell? Mm -hmm. It'll be like that, only even stronger. Yeah. My son, first year we had this place, he was hunting back in there mm -hmm. a ways. And he came out, he found me, I was up behind the house. And he, he said he heard a bunch of trees being shoved over and stuff back in there and he, he left. Mm -hmm. Where was that? It was right back in there, he said. He said it was kind of in this intersection where the draws come together. Uh -huh. He was back in there. It all points towards this area, huh? Yeah. <laughs> They've been moved. I don't know if they travel that so they're not seen. I heard something take off. Maybe it was a squirrel. It might have been. I don't know, maybe um, like their sounds can travel through here, all throughout the area. Yeah. But this is where I hear them. The house is probably 200 yards that way. Yeah. And I hear, it's, this is where the screams come from. You got real quiet back here. Yeah. All you can hear now is just a crow in the distance.
caves here? Not that I know of. Okay. I haven't ever found any. Saw some like rock openings there. I wasn't sure yeah. if that was a cave. Probably small ones. Um, yeah. I know some of the people that live around here talk about this mm -hmm. and they say bobcats den up in there and um, raise their young oh, wow. in this canyon. Yeah. It's, I have like a theory that like those big rocks down there uh -huh. could be possible like between two or three Sasquatches they push one of those big rocks out of the way they come out of some tunnel and then push it back and you know that's how people aren't able to find them like when they shoot one and they track them or whatever it may be you know they kill one and they go back it's gone yeah or you see one then you go back you don't see anything you it's know gone. later on that could definitely happen. Mm. Especially in a rock wall like that. Yeah. And I mean, it's a rock wall even on this side. Mm -hmm. So I could see that. I mean, yeah. Look at those big rocks. So. And you know, they could run up and down that like nothing. Mm -hmm. Hide behind them. Yeah. We'll stumble around and stuff, but they'll run up and down that like it's nothing. Yeah. Now, does this like drainage go for a long ways? Mm hmm. Um, they say it drains into Big Springs or Current River. Uh huh. So it, it runs. Um, it's not this steep all the way, but it runs uh, through the hills all the way to Current River. Yeah. And it, it's a drain because um, then whenever we get real heavy rains, water just gushes down through there. Okay. Big rocks for sure. Yeah. Giant. Yeah, and water just, you can hear water just rushing through here after big rains all the way up to the house. Mm -hmm. It just pours down through there because it's draining our neighbor's field. Mm -hmm. You get some rapids going on. It is, yeah. Actually, some of those rocks will catch water and it looks like a, like the top of a lemon pie or something. You know, it'll start going in circles and yeah. have that froth. Oh, wow, yeah. I thought I heard a knock up here, but I wasn't sure if it was a woodpecker or what it was. Or like gravel popping from that vehicle. Maybe. Oh, there's a woodpecker. Yeah. Yeah. I knew I there, heard something. There's some of those woodpeckers back in here that get, you know, really big. They'll be like big as a crow. They make some noise. Yeah. Yeah, they can get loud. I'll have some big caves along Merrimack, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Giant caves. Yeah. This is cool. Yeah. It's a pretty area. Anything get in here and hide. Yeah. A lot of big rattlesnakes back in here in the summer. Really? Oh yeah. We don't have rattlesnakes around that. Really? Rattles, you don't I know. Have... I heard they only put them in the Mark Twain. But I've never seen one before where I'm at. There's some big ones right through here in the summer. Matter of fact, I don't even come in here in the summer. Really? That bad, huh? Yep. I've had one in the yard last summer that was over four feet long. Really? Wow. He didn't leave under his own power. 
<laughs> Isn't there a season for it? I nope. don't know. There is in Pennsylvania, a rattlesnake season. Yeah. Jumped them out of their bed. Yeah. Well, this is where they're bedding at, pretty far away. <laughs> yeah. That's that's another reason I don't go very far back in there. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll get confused. I'll start yeah and there's just too much area to get lost in and everybody that goes there uses like four wheelers and side by sides yeah i've noticed that in all the big woods nobody walks mm -hmm. no i mean this is this is a good spot where they'd be blocked off from your view yeah and even the weather, you know, they could get down behind those rocks, you'd be out of the wind or. Mm -hmm. If you ever notice one of these big rocks have been moved, let me know. Okay. Maybe there's a big hole underneath one of them. <laughs> yeah. Big secret cave entrance. I never really thought about that, but it makes sense. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of cave entrances that are restricted zones on conservation areas. Yeah. You just can't go in them. Most of them are gated off. Yeah, I don't know if they could pick them up, but like that big flat one there, it's not connected to the ground. Mm -hmm. I've thought about it. Because I've found some with big holes. Mm -hmm. And you just don't know if they lead to deeper holes or... I don't know. Maybe all the cave systems connect at some point. They... I've heard they actually do. Yeah. And they go miles. Yeah. This is right about where the deer were. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking for their beds, but I don't see them. But they were right in here. Yeah. They were laying here where that sun could hit them. Yeah. And where they can see. Like right through here, I don't, I don't have that feeling, and we're not seeing the fresh rocks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. They say we have some really good sixth sense that we've forgotten how to use, mm -hmm. and I think that's what you know when you walk through a spot, you, you actually get that those feelings. Oh yeah. I've had it happen to me a couple times. That's a really big rock. Yeah. <laughs> Giant. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Which the historians say these Ozark mountains were actually bigger than the Rockies at one time. See, now that's a fresh one. That yeah. one's just been put there. Kind of strange yeah maybe mm -hmm. that's the one <laughs> could be there's something been under it mm -hmm. yeah i don't know there's something denning under it but it, it's a small animal uh -huh. like a box or something yeah too rugged to drive anything on. Yeah. Sounded like something underneath. 
Yeah. <laughs> See a big rub back there. Yep. That makes sense. I could see them doing that. Yeah. I don't know, that feeling kind of came back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These trees still have their leaves. What's up with that? I don't know. Huh. Yeah, here we're almost into December and they're still, they even got color. Yeah, they got color. And they're on the very top of the hill where it's like the windiest. Yeah. And right over there's our neighbor's field. Uh -huh. And in that direction, private land. Okay. Well, we can make our way back. Yeah. And maybe we'll get followed out of here. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can kind of go over here and go back out. Might not be as rough a walking to get up here on the ridge. Yeah. But yeah, I can see um, the rattlesnakes definitely keeping you out. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't. I don't come back in here, especially around that canyon, around all those rocks. Uh -huh. Cause it seems like the rattlesnakes, they love those rocks. Mm -hmm. Wonder if the bobcats eat the rattlesnakes. I don't know. Hopefully. Same general area as mm -hmm. the scream. Yeah. yeah. See like now, you can hear the little birds. Or when we were back over there, you couldn't hear anything. Now, do you think they're here year round? I think they are. Mm -hmm. I think they, I don't know that they're here every day, but I think they are up here hunting, foraging. Something was bedded right there, mm -hmm. a deer or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's gotta be a really long walk. Yeah. Long, rough walk. Yeah. So you got woods all around. Mm -hmm. There's not very many houses around either, is there? No. Yeah. No, there's a, uh... well, there's none. The only other one is about two miles back that way. There's a, there's a lady lives back there by herself mm -hmm. off the grid. And uh, she actually has a, sp a spring near her house has no electricity and uh, she lives back in there by herself. Yeah. Well, maybe the, like you said, the Sasquatch are coming from that nature preserve and coming out on this land. Yeah. But I've heard a lot of stories from this town. So I know they're around here. They are. And that's what's so strange is you hear stories from this area, but then when you talk to some of the people about it, they look at you like you've got mm -hmm. two heads. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes I wonder if they actually, they believe it, but they just don't want to talk about it. I think so. I hear a lot of stories like on the internet from like my area, but it's like, man, I don't know who any of those people are, but they're around here. Yeah. They're around. Yep. Sometimes I think that People have experiences that live around here and then they just don't want to think about it. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Ter terrifies them to even talk about it. Yeah. People are embarrassed a lot of times to talk about it. Mm -hmm. That's like one guy, just random one day uptown, he asked me, he said, do you believe in Sasquatch? And I said, yeah. And he didn't. I don't even know why he asked. I guess caught wind that you did probably yeah. and uh we got to talking about he's talking about pictures you know nobody ever has photos and yeah i said well the way he was talking the way he was he was actually 
ridiculing me. Just, I said, the, the way you're talking about it, you're not a believer. Even if I had a photo to show you, you would probably say it was somebody in a costume. Oh yeah, exactly. That's my main argument. It's like, even if I had the video footage, you just say it was me in a suit, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Because people can't wrap their minds around it. Which it's tough, you know? Yeah, it is. If we stay that way, we'll come out to the house. Okay. That's the thing is, you could have the best photo ever. We'll look at the Patterson Gimlin film. Mm -hmm. Even today, that was made in the 60s, and even today, people still say it's fake. Yeah. And it's pretty obvious it's not fake. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of walking out of that creepy feeling again. Yeah, yeah. I gotta admit, there is some type of like feeling when you get to certain areas. Yeah. I guess this one was broke over by that tree. Uh-huh. That's kind of low anyway. Yeah. I'm working out here. This is my garden area. Mm -hmm. I didn't mention it earlier, but I forgot about it till now. I was planting green beans, I think, earlier in the spring, and something was whistling in that brush. Oh, in there? Yeah. I was out here in the garden and I couldn't see anything, but I kept hearing just a distinct whistle. It wasn't a bird, mm -hmm. you know, just. Yeah, it's so thick in there. Yeah. And I definitely was felt like I was being watched and then I heard that whistle. So did you guys notice the eerie silence back there in the Mark Twain National Forest? I did. It was a weird sensation and I just felt like I was being watched the whole time. Many Sasquatch encounter stories start off where the person describes the forest getting very silent before seeing the actual creature itself. I think this property could use some serious research and it's a great place to run audio recorders with the big hauler there. And I feel like the Sasquatch are hanging out in those pines on the other side of the canyon. Michael said that there's a nature preserve back there and no one's allowed to hunt. So my plan for the next visit is to stay a few nights and camp out, run the parabolic microphone run the pulsar thermal device and set up the audio recorders our goal is to make peace with these creatures and hopefully obtain some type of evidence if you enjoyed this video then please like and subscribe if you would like to help the channel out you can donate to the paypal link or purchase a t-shirt on the Spreadshirt website any help would be very much appreciated and none of this would be possible without you guys, so thank you. If you encounter a Bigfoot, please don't shoot at it unless you have to. Alright guys, that's it for now, and I really appreciate everybody for watching. Until the next one, take care.